Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. Today we're going to focus on silver, and that's because one of the viewers suggested that we talk about silver a little bit. Thank you for your suggestion. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. And the reason why I don't talk about silver that often is because I believe silver moves more or less in a lockstep fashion together with gold, both being, of course, precious metals, although there are some factors that affect silver and don't affect gold, because silver seems to be a little bit more of an industrial metal compared to gold. And another difference between silver and gold is that although silver moves in lockstep fashion, as I said, with gold, those moves in silver are more volatile. We'll come back to that in a minute, but for now, let's have a look at that lockstep fashion, the timing. In front of you is a chart of gold price, blue line, and silver price, the red line, going all the way back to, to the beginning of 2008. This chart, of course, includes the all-time highs, both in gold and silver. So what I tried to do on the chart is to find the intermediate cycle lows on the gold chart. Here, for example, somewhere near the end of 2008 is an intermediate cycle low. Another one over here in early 2009. On this chart, I don't want to focus on any particular low. I just want to identify more or less important lows in gold price and see how those correspond to what silver is doing. So these are the important lows in gold price. That's where these black bars originate at the top of the chart, just under the blue line. So each of these black lines indicates an intermediate cycle low in gold price. And to determine whether silver moves in lockstep fashion with gold, we actually look at where these black bars intersect the red line. And as we see in most cases, black bars intersect the red line, the silver price, at relatively significant lows as well. Those would be your intermediate cycle lows in silver as well. So that just shows you that the timing of intermediate cycle lows for gold and silver prices is more or less the same. Of course, there is a bit of a difference. Like here, for example, in August last year, gold bottomed maybe a couple of weeks earlier than silver, and this is a weekly chart. But in general, plus or minus a couple of weeks, the timing of these intermediate cycle lows are similar for gold and silver, and that is why in my videos on precious metals, I usually focus on gold, which is a larger market. However, when it's actually time to take some long positions, like I am currently 80% allocated to precious metals, I don't only purchase assets related to gold. In my precious metals part of the portfolio, I spread the investments between gold and silver miners that I like and the ETFs in both gold and silver prices as well as gold and silver miners. Next, let's look at some more details of a more recent silver chart. So this is a daily chart of silver price in front of you. The intermediate cycle has been going on since late May over here. There is a chance that the intermediate cycle has completed here in the beginning of December. Several positive signs in silver indicating that we might be in a new advancing phase of a new intermediate cycle are as follows. Looking at RSI versus the silver price over the last month since mid-November, we've seen a lower low on the price and haven't seen that lower low on the RSI. That is called a positive divergence. And this pattern, positive divergence on RSI, often precedes a rally. Although remember, there are no guarantees in trading. Another positive sign that I see is that silver has cooled down enough since September. In September, at the peak, it was a whole 26% above its 200-day moving average. Whereas more recently, in the beginning of December, it was only about 1.5%, under 2% above its 200-day moving average. The reason why I think it's a positive sign is because I don't really want to buy an overbought asset 26% above its 200-day moving average when RSI is deep into overbought territory. At recent lows and even at current prices when RSI has recently been close to oversold territory and is now diverging upwards, at these price levels, I think silver is much more attractive. Another interesting thing is 
that although it's still capped by this 50-day moving average, the blue line, if we look at this downtrend line of the intermediate cycle decline, that downtrend line connecting the tops, the tops that we saw in September, early November, and early December, that intermediate trend line decline is, is already being broken in the last couple of days. So if silver is strong enough to break above the 50-day moving average and close above that moving average, we might see traders pile into precious metals, pushing the prices into that next intermediate cycle advance. Although a word of caution here, again, there are no guarantees and the COT reports for both gold and silver are unfortunately at the moment still a little bit too bearish. And lastly, talking about traders piling into precious metals or safe haven assets, take a note of this optimism index generated by sentiment trader. That's S&P 500 at the top, the black line. And the market sentiment at the moment is extremely optimistic. The traders, the dumb money, the speculators, the traders are too optimistic about the stock markets, which often coincides with the intermediate cycle tops. So if over the next several weeks, stock markets finally give us a noticeable intermediate cycle low, that might push a lot of traders into precious metals. Finally giving us an intermediate cycle advance into early next year. I keep my fingers crossed for that. I also keep my 80% allocation to precious metals already. And if I don't make another video until Christmas, Merry Christmas everyone, happy holidays, happy subscribing to the channel, happy hitting that like button, and good luck in your trades.